Greetings, Commanders, and welcome to the channel. Fallen Wings is upon us. New ships, new items, and some sweet new things to throw in your ever-expanding dorm. If you play Fate Grand Order, you are already familiar with lottery events, and well, guess what's back on the menu, boys? We will be farming up some medals, and ooh boy, are we going to need a few of them. Each pass on this lottery is going to require 12,000, that's right, you heard me, 12,000 medals. And there's three phases of this lottery, so that means 36,000 medals to clear out the shop. Much like the visitors event, each day you will get a daily 3 times multiplier for the normal mode maps, as well as some daily missions to help with the metal farming. Now, this is a pretty hard event, however, the devs did indicate that they played through it and will be giving us a bit of a toned down version. I haven't seen any indication on how nerfed it will be, but it's likely that it will be slightly harder or on par with the visitors event. So let's start at the top. Slap's roof of this event. We can fit so many new ship girls into this event. We're going to be getting nine new ship girls. North Carolina, Washington, Minneapolis, Colorado, Maryland, Wasp, Hobby, Calc, and the Mountain Mama, West Virginia. So let's start off with North Carolina. She's going to be coming out of the second phase of the lottery, but she will also be dropping in B3 as well as D3. She is an SSR battleship that makes carriers quiver in fear. Not only does she have a skill that helps you reduce incoming aviation damage by 5 to 15%, but she also increases her own firepower by 10 to 30% of her anti-air stat. Reduce damage and dish out even more. While this will make Fox Twin Strikes feel like mere mosquito bites, her downsides are, well, even with the increased firepower from her anti-air stat conversion, she's not going to be dishing out nearly as much damage as a dedicated damage dealer like Hood. However, when it comes to specializing in anti-air, she is an absolute monster. Now on to Washington, the ship that makes this event as hype as it is. The Gotcha Limited SSR battleship has a 20 second, 40 to 70% chance to fire off an EX barrage, as well as a combo skill that works with South Dakota. When South Dakota's health drops below 30%, this will increase Washington's damage by 15 to 20% and redirect 30% of the damage that South Dakota takes to her. This also drops a shield on South Dakota that prevents lethal damage for 5 seconds. Be aware, however, that this skill does not work on the damage taken while South Dakota is under the influence of Aegis. Now, Washington is a very, very hype ship. The 22nd EX barrage on top of her main gun means that she will be putting out consistent damage instead of sporadic large amounts of damage like most battleships. In PvP, when teamed up with South Dakota, it bumps their survivability through the roof. Couple that with their high anti-air stats, EX barrage, and double damage on main gun, and you have a hard-hitting combo that just doesn't want to die. The downside to her is that outside of pairing her up with South Dakota, she's just kind of all right. And outside of PvP, pairing the two of these up is going to cost you quite a bit of oil. Sure, her barrage is good for clearing the screens, but there are better, cheaper options for farming. Now, we will be getting a new ship, Minneapolis, and well, there's no real information on her other than the fact that she's a New Orleans class heavy cruiser. For the most part, the other new ships that are coming out are either side grades or downgrades of already established ships. Hobby and Calc are also brand new ships with very little information. They will, however, just add to the list of charges against you when the police show up at your door. Now that we have the ships out of the way, let's talk about the event itself. Fallen Wings will bring a few new things to the table outside of ships and gear. First up, we are going to be fighting Sirens, the big bad Cthulhu ships, so I am very excited to see them in action and in cutscenes. If that wasn't bad enough, maps will involve a mechanic called Fleet Range, where your fleet has limited movement range based on the type of ship and overall speed of your fleet. Oh, and the bosses on the screen? Yeah, those are hunter fleets, and they're going to hunt down your closest fleet 
to attack them. Destroyer class hunter fleets will move two spaces each turn and cruisers will be able to move three. Now, defeating them is optional, but on some maps it is part of the three star criteria. The wandering bosses are much more tanky and deal much more damage than the level boss, so avoid them if you don't need them for the star or just beat them down and then you don't have to deal with them. I'm not your real dad. A1 through B3 will range from 10 to 50 medals per clear. Once you start hitting the hard modes, it goes from 50 medals at C1 to 180 at D3. If you can clear D3 with a total cost under 300 oil, it will be the most efficient map to farm medals. However, this means that your fleet costs do need to be below 42 oil, which may be a little tough depending on the difficulty that they throw at us. If that is not an option, try to run a fleet that costs around 15 oil and farm B3 for efficiency. If you fall shy of that, test out what you can do effectively for the lowest oil cost and farm what you are most comfortable with. For details on farming nodes, check out the guide in the description and a big shout out to Astral Gemini and Kitsuke for putting that together. Now, let's put our eyes on the prize. That's right, the lottery. Obviously, North Carolina is the big prize here, but let's not pass over the F4U Corsair and the high-performance fire control radar. Oh, and the dorm items, like this really angry-looking cat and another set of ludes for your dorm wall. So, since we already talked about North Carolina, let's talk about the F4U Corsair. Not only does this bad boy have two 500 pound bombs that deal 380 damage instead of 360, which is typical, but it also increases your whole fleet's anti-air stat by 5% for 8 seconds. So this does happen after an airstrike, and this is touted as one of the best fighter jets in the game. Then there's the high performance fire control radar. This bad boy comes with 36 accuracy and 30 firepower when capped out. If that wasn't good enough for you, it also comes with a special skill, reducing the time till the first volley on the equipped battleship by 15%. This means that Hood's going to hit harder and more accurate, and will be bringing the pain 15% faster. This is a fire control radar on steroids, and thankfully, you get these two in the first round of the lottery, so even if you don't care about North Carolina, the SSR bully, or that angry cat, you will absolutely want to clear out the first round just to grab these two. Now, we're not 100% sure what the other items are going to be, and things could always change, but in the previous event, the items in the lottery are things like gold DD guns, the gold bofers, some gold skill books and retrofit prints, along with plates, gold and oil as well as some dorm food but I don't think that they would have a reason to change those out so we'll see this event will be very interesting and I am looking forward to new mechanics and new loot oh and those new ships I do suggest prepping some battleships for this event as their high damage and survivability will serve you very well here Nelson South Dakota Huga or Arizona are all viable options I really like Arizona due to her frontline heal however if you have hood it's all good you will want to work on some tanky or evasive frontliners like Belfast Leander retrofit Eldridge or Houston additionally you can run prins for that sweet German engineering tankiness. These are not, however, by any means the be-all, end-all of ships, and I'm pretty sure that someone will say, but Shotgun Shogun, you said, uh, insert ship here is the best, and the discords will trip out about it, but as long as you have some decently leveled ships, you should do fine. Previously, B3 had a boss fleet level of 60, with about an average escort level of 55 to 57. This is on par with 6-1. Sure, it had two hunter fleets, so that bumped up the difficulty a little bit, but if you're doing all right in World 6, you should do fine here. Granted, again, we don't know what they are going to be nerfing, so this may be just the hard modes and they leave the normal modes alone, but time will tell. I hope that you guys are looking forward to this, and I hope that this is a very, very fun event. 
The events are coming fast and furious, but at least we are never bored. Anyways, Commanders, I hope that you enjoyed this. And like I said, make sure to check out that guide in the description for much more information, as well as ship drops per node and blueprint drops. Again, thank you so much, Astral Gemini and Kitsuke, for working on that. I would like to give them a huge shout out. I would also like to thank all the Patreons who helped make this channel possible. You guys are fantastic as well. If you would like to join them, there is a link down in the description. Sign up for whatever tier you are comfortable with and check out the rewards. But if you would like to support the channel, just make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash that bell notification, drop me a like and a comment, and I will catch you later, Commanders. Take it easy. Peace. Sashi <laughs>